Today we're going to look at the Google Finance formula to pull in current or historical data for stocks or currencies in Google Sheets. So let's assume you already have your data pulled in using the coefficient add-on. We can now pull in the current prices. So simply start typing the Google Finance formula. We can enter in the ticker text. And just like that, we have the current price. To make this simpler, if you have a list of currencies, you can use the cell that has the currency ticker in it, or the stock ticker in it. And then you can simply drag down and it will have the current price for each stock or currency. Let's go ahead and dive a little deeper and let's look at historical prices. So here, let's go ahead and walk through getting some historical prices and we're looking at getting a single date. So if you don't have the help text showing up, go ahead and click on the question mark to show Google's help text. And so you can see in the formula, we start with the ticker, which we already covered. Next is the attribute or the data point that you wanna get. It doesn't explain it here because there's a lot of them. So if you click on learn more, it'll pull up the sidebar and you scroll down to attribute and you can look down through here. So there's a section for real-time data with a number of different ones, including price, price open, high, low, etc. There's also down here for historical data and for mutual fund data. So you can pull quite a few data points depending upon what you need for your particular project. Today, we're gonna focus on price. And so let's go ahead and jump to the next one, which is the start date. So this is the start date that you want for the range of prices you like to get. And then, and optionally, you can put a end date or number of days. And then finally, the interval, which is can be daily or weekly. So today, we're looking at today minus 30. So you can use a formula in here to calculate the day. And then minus 30 up to and including today. So historically, it won't include today. But let's go ahead and check this out. And there is our data. So if we want to get one data point, for example, for a particular day, maybe 30 days ago, we can do this formula. So if we start down here, let's go ahead and get rid of the end date and just have the start date. You'll notice that we return actually four cells. And so what we have to do in here is wrap it with an index formula to get just the cell we need, which is the price. And so we're getting the second row and the second column, which gets us the price down here. So that's what we're using there to get the price. We're already referencing the A3. So we can simply drag this down and we can see the price from 30 days ago. Another thing we'll look at real quick is the exchange. So Google recommends for the most accurate data that you include the exchange and it should look like this. This specifying of the exchange makes sure that it won't accidentally pull the wrong stock if the tickers maybe overlap on different exchanges and ensures that you're getting the data from the exchange that you want to. If you leave this out, it will simply look for and automatically choose the exchange to pull the data from. So we can use it like this, or if you like to use the cells, you can take the cell where the exchange is, do this ampersand to add our semicolon to divide between the two and then add the coin ticker at the end. So that's all it takes to add the exchange. And finally, let's look at currency exchange. If you want to switch between perhaps the Canadian dollar, US dollar, and then you simply prepend currency colon and then the original and the target currency. So for example, if we want to remove the cells here, we could do Canadian USD, just like that. Or if you want to reference dynamically, you can use the cell references just like this. All right, that's it for today. Thanks so much and tune back again soon.